Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Well, tonight what we're going to do, um, and, and we're going to um, cover this and land someplace, it, wherever the Spirit of God leads me to stop or whatever, we make it more depth. But we're going to cover the names given to the Holy Spirit in the Old and New Testament, there's at least 25 different names that the Holy Spirit is referred to, or referred by, or referred to by, or something like that. We'll get the right. Uh, there are 25 different references to the Holy Spirit under different names in the Old and the New Testament. All right. Let's go ahead. Um, in John 20, 22. Amen. Did you enjoy this morning? I enjoyed this morning. Well, three of you enjoyed it. I know more now. I had people tell me on the way out the door it was good, so hallelujah. At least five. Now I'm just teasing. Now you guys are going to get busy. The Winston Salem people are trying to get, they want, their goal is to be bigger than us within a month over at the Greensboro campus. Now, so let's have a healthy competition here. Let's outdo them. Amen. Let's get Greensboro bigger so they have to keep working harder. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, I just believe we're going to be able to reach and do more and get more done. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. John 20. Wow. I'll tell you what. John 20, 22. <laughs> Boy. I wish I had my glasses here tonight. <laughs> uh, he's referred to as the Spirit. Amen. Um, Jesus here says, um, Then Jesus said to them, Peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, send I you, verse 22. And when he said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. And I, I cannot see this. Praise God. Mm. Amen. My, yeah, and I'm going to I'm gonna have to borrow some readers. They look kind of funky. I don't think they look real stylish for me, but you know what? <laughs> I can see, man, I can't see anything else, but I can see this. Oh, yeah, there, praise God. Amazing. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So receive you the Holy Ghost. The Greek words and Hebrew words translated uh, spirit also mean breath and wind. They both mean breath and wind, okay? And um, we, it's... It's suggested in John in Genesis 2-7, um, when he breathed in the breath of life, Psalm 104, verse 30, uh, and compared with Job 33, 4. You won't have to write these down. I'm not going to cover all these scriptures. The thought here is the innermost part of God going into man. When God breathed into man the breath of life, or he took out of his spirit and put it into man. You know, it is, you know, the breath. It's, it's, the, uh, it's, it's talking about the breath of God or the spirit of God, and that is his innermost part going into man. Hallelujah. So, um, the, so we have breath here in, in, first, uh, in, in these, these passages here. Um, okay. And then the wind, John 3, 6 through 8. Uh, look over there. I am sorry that I forgot my glasses, got here and realized it, and <laughs> my wife and Shannon had already left the house. Um, John 3, 5, very, very, I say unto you, except a man be born of, 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 unto, uh, of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto you, you must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, and cannot tell where it came from, uh, whether it goeth or whether it goes. Uh, so is everyone that is born of the spirit of God. Wind is sovereign. The Spirit divides severally as he wills. Remember from 1 Corinthians. You cannot dictate to the wind what to do. All right? Um, just as you can learn the laws that govern the wind and tap into its power. Example, windmills. You know, if you have a windmill, you can tap into their power. It is so with the Holy Spirit. You, Holy Ghost, you can, learn, you can learn the laws by which he operates. 
which are the laws of God, and you can connect with him and allow him to use you and work through you. In other words, you can t and, and, and tap into the power of God by understanding how the Holy Spirit works. All right? Allow him to work through you. Praise God. The Holy Spirit, like the wind, is invisible, but nonetheless perceptible, real, and mighty. I mean, when you go outside and say the wind's blowing, what are you doing? You perceive what the wind's doing. You see leaves. You see, tree, you see leaves flying through the air. You see limbs of trees bending over. You see it going. If your grass hadn't been cut in a while, you can see the grass laying down. Uh, we, we had to run up uh, to the mountains yesterday, uh, Friday night and Saturday. I had to. We did. And uh, we were, went over to Bass Lake down at the bottom of Moses Cone Manor. And uh, we just sat there and kind of parked the car looking out. It was, it was snowing, real light snow, and the wind was blowing. But the wind was doing some weird stuff on the water. Because right there where that lake is is where Moses Cone built his manor up at the top. And then it came down to the stocking pond, uh, and then it went out into the lake. And so it tunnels. The air was tunneling down through that, that little bit of gap in the, in the uh, side, the, the uh, topographical layout of the land there. And it would hit the lake. And it wouldn't just blow across. It was, it was hitting the lake, and water was going in swirls. It was just doing weird stuff. The water was going this way, and then it would turn around and go that way, and then, you know, the top of the surface. Now, we couldn't see the wind, but we could see the results of the wind. We could see it doing all kinds. And, of course, the, you know, you get out, and, the, and that real fine snow was just hitting you all in the face and blowing all over. It's kind of an icy, real fine snow. And it was just blowing all over the place. You could say, man, the wind's blowing. Now, you couldn't see the wind, but you could see the effects of it. And there's a lot of times... Um, praise God. You know, this old song, the, you know, the wind is blowing again. The wind is blowing again. Just like the day of Pentecost, the wind is blowing again. Hallelujah. Amen. See, they, they didn't see the Holy Ghost. They saw cloven tongues like a fire. They saw the effects of the Holy Ghost falling. Amen. Amen. I remember my, um, you, you can see, and see, you get in church services. You can, we're not going to get through the 25. I'm already hung up on one. See, you can get into church services and see the effects of the wind of the Spirit. Or, or, or the Spirit or the wind, the, the holy wind, the Holy Spirit. Amen. The holy breath of God in manifestation. You can see effects of that and not see Him. I remember my first camp meeting was camp meeting 1980. Um, now, I've been born, I got born again in 1979. Since the call of, of July the 11th, 1979. Amen. And... Um, then on July the 18th, 1979, I got baptized in the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. Actually, that wasn't here. That was July the... All right, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. On the 15th, I got baptized in the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. Janie came to church on the 18th and got born again baptized in the Holy Ghost, saying three songs in three different languages. Uh, after she, like, tore the door off my Fiat Spider. Anyway, <laughs> she got mad with me because I had gotten saved. Anyway, then she got saved. Hallelujah. But July 11th, 1979, I got, I got born again the 15th. I got baptized in the Holy Ghost. And then in August of that year, I, I knew I was called to the ministry. I just sometime in the August, that I, I had an understanding I was called to the ministry. And so a year later, I ended up, I was out in Tulsa at camp meeting in 1980. Never heard of Brother Hagin. Never heard of, uh, kind of, uh, before then, heard of him during that year. God said, go to Ramah. I went to Ramah, got out there to Tulsa, and never seen things. I mean, growing up Pentecostal, I saw stuff I'd never seen before. You know? And uh, I remember one night we were sitting there, and... Uh, Pat Harrison, I didn't know who she was. I, did, I just, I mean, I saw Brother Hagin. First time I saw Brother Hagin, the hair on the back of my neck stood up. Just, just, just sense the Spirit of God. See, we can be sensitive about spiritual things and not know why we're do, walking in places. But while we react to them, God was making a divine connection. And, um, and I remember this lady ran up on the platform. Hallelujah. And I didn't know who she was. And she started speaking in tongues, and she started acting out all these different things while she was doing it. She ran out to one of the, uh, the tree kind of plants on the platform, grabbed it, and leaned it over, and stood it back up, and then fell out. Well, then some man ran out there, found out later it was her husband. And he started interpreting everything she said in tongues and having the same motions everywhere she went along the way. But he was, start, he, he was talking about this. He's talking about the wind of the Spirit blowing. Hallelujah. He said it was going to blow through. There was going to be, you know, and he started talking about the wind and the spirit blowing. Went out to the tree and grabbed it and said, it'll blow like it bends a tree over. I stood it back up and then went and fell out right beside his wife. And I went, wow. That's cool. Amen. And then Brother Buddy uh, later got and started singing a song. The wind is blowing. The wind is blowing. The wind is blowing. Glory to God. See, the Holy Ghost is the holy wind of God. 
And he manifests himself in different ways. One of the ways is like the wind. Oh, I've been in services. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I've been in services where you, where you can just, it's spiritual. It's not physical. It's spiritual. It's almost like a breeze of the Spirit of God just blows through the room. Hallelujah. Oh, my. I said, oh, my. Oh, 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 oh. oh how, how refreshing. You know, that's a refreshing move of the Spirit. Glory to God. Oh, my, 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 my. I said, my, my. <laughs> hallelujah. The wind of God. Oh, see, when we talk about him and, man, and, and, and honor him, hallelujah, praise God. The wind of the Spirit just blow through a place. I've, I've seen it in, like in, in waves. Uh, uh, you know, you'd be in a large meeting, all of a sudden, you know, the, you could sense the Spirit of God's moving. Just like he moved on the face of the waters, he moves on the congregations of God. Now listen, this is as he wills. You can't just make it up and have him do it. You can't call him up and dial, dial a move and get in the move. Oh, but when you get into his presence, the, the, the Lord says, I inhabit the praises of my people. Oh, but when we get to the place we can worship God and worship God and just get lost in him, oh, he'll come and inhabit. Hallelujah. Yeah, he's on the inside of us, but he manifests himself in other ways too. Glory be to God. And I've just been in those services where God just flows in. Uh, oh, my, my, my. I remember a number of years ago, we were back in our home church in Greenville. Um, I'd been fasting a lot. Hadn't been doing that lately, can't you tell? Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. But I'd, I'd, been in a, I'd been in an extended period of fasting. And we were in the church service on one Sunday morning. And um, I, this, this, I'm telling you. I, I, I just, and I had the liberty, my, my pastor recognized that I, I was a person of the Spirit, and they, uh, they trusted me, and I'm on the front row of the service, and I just stopped, right, he kind of had a little bit of a, a pause on the service, and I began to speak in tongues, you know, and, 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 and so forth, and, um, and then the pastor waited, and all of a sudden, I began to interpret, and actually, the Spirit of God was speaking to him. Oh, my. Oh, you could sense the holy awe of God in the place, and you're, you're almost outside of yourself when this is going on. And, he, and, and the Spirit of God said some things about what he was supposed to do, and he answered back and said, I, but I'm, I'm afraid, I'm, I'm this. And then he started answering something, and the Spirit of God spoke back again. We had about a four or five-minute conversation back and forth by the Holy Ghost. Oh, my. I said, oh, my. The other time we were in, in, in a church service, and, um, and, and the Spirit of God began, walked up to, to the pastor and began to speak in tongues. He spoke in tongues back, and, and it's like we knew what we were saying and had a conversation back and forth in tongues. Oh, my. See, when the Spirit of God starts, and, and things, things take place in the Spirit that you can't accomplish in the flesh. I said, there are things that take place in the Spirit that you can't accomplish in the flesh. Well, did, you understand, did you understand what was being said? Exact, not, not exactly, but I'll tell you what. See, spiritual things get deposited, and God brings them up later. Remember, Paul said this at one time. Do y'all mind if I go this way? <laughs> go ahead, don't you? Hallelujah. See, aren't you glad you didn't stay home tonight? <laughs> the apostle Paul said, I knew a man about 13 years ago or 14 years ago, whether in the spirit or out of the spirit, I cannot tell. And this is what he said next. Who was caught up into the third heaven and heard, heard things unlawful to be uttered. And he saw things and heard things spiritually he could not articulate out. It took him the rest of his life by revelation of the Holy Ghost to write it out in what we refer to as the Pauline epistle, Pauline revelation. See, he was called up into heaven and heard things unlawful to be uttered. In other words, to be repeated just casually. He had to write it out as doctrine over the rest of his life. Hallelujah. And we call that the Pauline revelation. Who we are in Christ. What we have in Christ. What, where we're, where we're seated in Christ. What it means to be a new creation, new creation believer. Glory to God. I said glory to God. And you see, the wind of the Spirit blows through the church. Where he is allowed. I said, where he is allowed, where people are hungry for the move of the Spirit, he'll move and manifest himself, and he'll blow. And you can't tell him how to blow or where to blow. I watched, the, I watched that wind, uh, 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 well, yesterday, it was yesterday morning, yeah, uh, out on the lake. And I tell you, that one, one time that, that wind would come out, and it was the weirdest thing, I'm telling you. I'd never seen it. Just, it hit the lake, and it's like somebody was water skiing, and the, and the, the kind of waves across the top went right and left. The next time it came from the other side of the lake and came down and they swirled. 
And then, that, and then later it was a straight line and the water is just rippling. You can't tell the wind where to go and how to do. But he, the wind was manifested yesterday. We can have a church service and the Spirit of God moving a certain way. And we, he may move this way. We just yield to his manifestation. He may come in and do something else. He may come in and split the thing right down the middle. He may do something over here. He might do something over there. He might reach down and just touch a heart and, and, and transform a life. Oh, the holy wind of God. When he makes, oh, the spirit bids us, bids us come aside as never before, bids us to take a step aside from the norm and from the hustle and the bustle. And, 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 and bid him come, bid him come, bid him come and manifest. And he will. He will. He'll manifest himself as he sees fit that will honor and magnify the master. Oh, Oh, as the darkness gets darker, and as the error and the fallacies arise, and false doctrines and false and doctrines of men arise within the church, those who are sensitive to the Spirit, the Holy Ghost, will bring forth the glory of God. <laughs> and confirm the truth. We'll confirm the truth, and men will see the difference between the age of darkness and the age of light. The glory of the Lord will be made manifest. Darkness will have to flee. And those who've given themselves over to the light to be fully yielded to the will of the Spirit. We'll walk in the light and be in the light as he is the light. <laughs> oh, and the hearts of men will be touched and changed and transformed. Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory. what rejoicing will be in our hearts. Oh, what peace will be in our souls as we become vessels of the holy wind of God. It is your hour. It is your time to see made manifest that which the Lord has spoken and decreed that it would surely come to pass. So rise to that place. Rise to that calling. And bid the Spirit come and move and manifest. And see, see, see the will of God consummated and brought to pass in its fullness, says the Lord. Oh, glory to God. See, there's been a, there's a seem to have been a lull for a season of the Holy Ghost work, and that's because, you know, for whatever reason, people have drawn back. In our own midst, we've, we've kind of just gotten distracted. But the Spirit bids us. Oh, bids us. Bids us. Hallelujah. To come and to run. Hallelujah. We're going to have to run to keep up. I said, we're going to have to run to keep up. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. Glory to God. I know a number of years ago when I had la when when um, back in nineteen mid mid eighties mid eighties mid eighties 
Now, see, Dad Hagen at, at that time would have been in his 60s, early 60s. He went home to be the Lord in 2003 at 87, so 20 years earlier in the early 80s, uh, he would have been 67, about 1983, 84. And, um, and actually what he was looking to do, he was looking to really slow down. And uh, he was going to send Pastor Hagen, who at that time wasn't Pastor Hagen, he was Evangelist Hagen, running the Bible school. And he was going to send him out on the road. You know, he could send out, had the crusades, keep, keep the ministry's face out there to, to the people, Rama out there to the people so they could be connected to it and, you know, help support what God was doing there. And he was, he was just really planning on kind of kicking back and going into semi-retirement and just teach at the school. <laughs> so we could have a plan. And I'll be honest with you, I was kind of like, you know, thinking about slowing down. The past couple of years, you know, is there a place we can slow down and, you know, still do the work of God but not have to be as, you know, busy or whatever? You're, just, you're, you're, you're asking the Lord to check, kind of. You know, he don't, sometimes he don't, don't tell you no. He just kind of lets you kind of whatever. Well, sometime in that, you're at around 84 or so, Pastor bro, Kenneth Hagin Jr. at the time came into his office and said, Dad, I'm supposed to start a church. Brother Hagin, because Brother Hagin had been praying about slowing down. He couldn't get peace. He couldn't get relief from it. He said, that's it. That's it. That's it. I'm supposed to go more. You're supposed to stay here. And they started the church. He came off the road. Brother Hagin went back out on the road and stayed on the road until he went home. I said he stayed on the road until he went home. Another 20 years, he was out on the road ministering and teach, preaching and going and traveling and sharing Jesus and doing the all faith crusades, running, having the camp meeting, the winter Bible seminar, out on the road, praise God. Right on up to the very, as a matter of fact, see, he was at a meeting when, when he, he, they, he had to come home because he wasn't feeling right. And um, Pastor Hagen went and finished the meeting. Dad went home, and that, and that was when he passed away in September of that year. He, he, had, he was in his last meeting. Now, his last full meeting besides camp meeting was Winston-Salem. 19, in 2003, May of 2003, we were there. So a lot of y'all were there over there. Amen? See, uh, I just got this. We're going to have to run to keep up. It's not time to slow down. It's time to pick up. Time to do more. Now, don't get caught up in little stuff. Don't let the devil get you off track. Don't let the devil bring in little snippety little doohickeys to play with your head or whatever. You know, why they do this? Why they do that? Just go ahead and let's run. Amen? We ain't got time for that. We got to run. So we got to run. The Spirit of God's bidding us, come aside, come aside, come aside. Can you say glory? Somebody say glory, hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. Oh, my, 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 my. How precious is the Spirit of God. I said, how precious is the Spirit of God. He blows in like the wind. You can't, listen, that's what it is. You can't come in here and say, okay, the Spirit of God's going to do this this morning. You can't tell him that. I am. Um, see, we're talking about the Holy Ghost. See, we get, we get spooky about the Holy Ghost sometimes. Why? Because we can't see him. We see the results of his manifestation, you know. And you know, I, I, I'll tell you, I can guarantee you, if some of the people I've known in my past were at the lake yesterday, they would have come up with some goofy spiritual analogy of why that happened. Now, how do you know? Well, I've... Uh, a number of years ago, uh, when I first got saved, uh, there, was a fam there was a family friend of our, my family um, that, um, you know, had, he really had backslidden and gone out into some sin and, and come back into the kingdom. But my, my family had known his family for decades. Known for decades. Okay? And, um, and so he was having little prayer meetings over his, his place. And um, we were over there one night, and his roommate that, that you know, was living with him, you know, and I, different ends, okay? But his roommate, he, he rented out a room to this guy, and this guy was, uh, you know, we were having prayer meetings, and, and Jamie and myself and another couple and, uh, and, and the, uh, the, my other roommate from Rama, um, that was, we went out to Rama at the same time, ended up, you know, having the same apartment. We were in there, we are praying one night. And a candle, we had lit in candles to pray. You know how you get when, you, when you're young? Got to have a candle. Got to have the, the inspiration picture of Jesus. And you got to have the praying hand so you can pray. All right? And uh, so you light the candle and you pray. Well, the candle burned down one side. Didn't burn straight down. One side went down. And one of them went, oh, the Spirit of God's blowing on the candle. Got, and I got all weird. Next thing you know, one of the girlfriends of one of the guys that was there has gone to the pastor and tell him we're having, you know, seances over there. 
Now, we weren't conjuring up the devil. We didn't have a Ouija board. Now, they got out of hand with, this, with the, what they say about the Spirit of God doing something because the kingdom burned down the rights. I got called into the pastor's office. I said, Pastor, you know, and I'm young. I said, Pastor uh, Gentry, he, he just got excited. You know, I said, you know, nothing else went on like that. You know, nothing weird was going on. Just he got excited and said something, you know. See, we can't misinterpret what God's doing. And just because you got a goosebump didn't mean that you're supposed to get up and preach the gospel. I mean, uh, stand up in the pulpit and be the prophet so-and-so of the universe. I've seen people you get used of God by prophecy, and all of a sudden they're a prophet. No. You're not a prophet just because God used you to prophesy. You were just a vessel. Amen? Besides, are you operating in the word of wisdom, word of knowledge, or discerning of spirits and prophecy, or tongues and interpretation of tongues, or do you just have a prophecy? And do you operate in those things consistently together? See, the prophet's ministry is going to have uh, one of the revelation gifts and a vocal gift in operation. Amen. I said they're going to have that in operation. If you're a prophet, and on a regular basis, God's going to use you that way. But we can see the manifestation of the Spirit and not get weird about it. We don't have to get weird about it. Just because God moved tonight where you jump chairs, don't mean you jump chairs tomorrow night. I was in a meeting with Dad Hagen one year. And, you know, one night, I mean, was, they, you were talking about, I've been in that. I've been in these, it wasn't just something that, Brett, that Kenneth Hagen came with. He says this is how we used to do back in the early days of Pentecost, when he was in the early days of his uh, connection with the Assemblies of God. He said we had services like this all the time. But I remember, you know, uh, one year, I don't know if Janie was with me. I had gone down to the Falcon camp meeting. Were you with me that time with, with uh you don't remember if you went with me on that trip. I, I, I went with somebody. I don't know if she went with me or not. But, um, um, oh, man, Ray Hughes, Ray, Dr. Ray Hughes, former general overseer of the, of the Church of God. Now, that's, that's the Church of God, the Pentecostal one's the Pentecostal. You've got the Church of God of Anderson, Indiana, worldwide Church of God Armstrongism. And then you've got the Church of God out of Cleveland, Tennessee, which is a, 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 akin to the Assemblies of God or the Pentecostal holiness. And Dr. Hughes was preaching. Now, he was an old Pentecostal preacher. And I'll tell you, right, in the middle, right somewhere in the middle of his sermon, I mean the power of God just manifests. We, we call it, we would say it fell. Because that's how it feels. See, we're, we're using terms of, of our experience to describe. And that may not be that he fell, but that's how we would describe it. Okay? And the place came unglued. And he just stopped and said, this is a divine interruption. I mean, people were running and shouting, I mean. And so when, when I started seeing some of those things at Raymond, it didn't surprise me. I've been in that. Now, people who hadn't been in Pentecost may not may have been surprised by it, didn't know what, that, you know what that was. It was the manifestation of the Spirit. Glory to God. What's all that running got to do with that? I don't know, but I, the, the psalmist said, I can run through a troop and leap over a wall. Hallelujah. When David brought the Ark of the Covenant back into the temple, he stripped himself and danced before the Lord with all his might. Glory to God. I'm telling you, over and over again, there, when, when the Holy Ghost manifests himself, people did all kinds of stuff. Now, remember, I'm right here, and I'm, I'm, I'm at Ramah. Dad Hagen said one time he was in Israel, in Jerusalem. And he saw a bunch of, of uh, Jewish priests coming down the street, and they're just kind of, they look like, you know, I mean, you just stole their best friend. I mean, they look like they lost their everything. They were no joy, no happiness, nothing good going on. Hallelujah. And um, he said all of a sudden, they just started dancing in the street, spinning circles, and, and, and Brother Hagin was close. He said, that's the Holy Ghost just fell on them. That was the Spirit of God just came on them. He said, and all of them, as fast as it came, it left, and they all went back to walking like this. See? Now, we, we describe it as him falling on us because it's just, you know, we, the heavens above, we just, it's all of a sudden. Now, okay, I've been in services where the glory was sitting up above the people, as, you know, not all the way down on them. I said, the glory coming in, you, know, you, you can sense the charge and the atmosphere of the manifestation of the Spirit. Now, everybody can't see it, just those who step, you know, God allows to see into that realm. Amen. But so we, it, it's, it feels like it falls on you. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. Now, where was it? I was at Raymond, that's right. We were out there back in the late 90s at Rainbow Bible Church, a winter Bible seminar. And we had one of those meetings where the power of God just fell. And the place came unglued. 
Oh, it's just God's doing things there. What's he doing? Well, in some places, he's healing up people. In other places, he's pouring in the oil and the salve and bind up the brokenhearted. In other places, great joy is coming on people's lives. He's just in work doing all kinds. See, the Holy Ghost can multitask. Hallelujah. I said he can multitask. It didn't have to be just one thing he's doing. He can be doing all sorts of things all over the building at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Holy laughter erupted in the place. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion. Amen. We were like them that dream. Whereof they said among the heathen, the Lord has done great things for them. Whereof he has done great things for us. And whereof we are glad. Amen. He's filled our mouth with laughter and our tongue with singing. Hallelujah. Holy laughter just erupted. Just, just a joy that came out of, didn't come out of the soul, came out of the spirit. Oh my, talking about just getting, you know, let's, you, you can go to church and get blessed in that way. You can get, the spirit of God just bless you just to do it. Transform your life. It might take you some time to figure out what was going on, but that's okay. You can walk in that for a season. Oh, glory to God. Well, the next night we came back. Now, because we had it last night, got to have it tonight. Got to have the same kind of service. Brother Hagin started teaching about this lady about oh, eight rows back over here in this section, way over there. She just sits there and starts going, <laughs> I'm thinking, that sounds like the Wicked Witch from the West. And Brother Hagin just kind of, he, he interrupted him. It was loud enough to interrupt him. And he just said, glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. And after, after a couple minutes of it, I mean, it must have got on his nerves. And finally, he just said, he said, David Ingalls, come up here and sing something. Now, I'm telling you. See, when we learn to flow with the wind and let, and let the wind move us instead of us trying to govern and, and, and control where the wind goes. Amen. We want, to set our, we want to be like windmills. We set ourselves so that when he blows, we, go, we move. You can't go move him. But we want to be ready like a sail of a ship to pull the sails up and wait. And when the wind catches it, we go with the wind. And Brother David came up to the piano and sat down and just kind of picked around for a minute. And all of a sudden he started going, there's a whole lot of people going home. By the signs of time, it won't be long. In the twinkling of an eye, we'll all be gone. There's a whole lot of people going home. There's a whole lot of people going home. And I'm telling you, he's saying that about two or three minutes, and all of a sudden, everybody in the building got down on their knees and on their, close to the ground with their faces they could, depending on where they were sitting. Got to think about heaven. Got to think about God saving people, bringing them into the kingdom, and having a glorious triumphant entry into heaven. See, the wind did not blow in the other way he blew the night before. He blew in a different direction because he's holy. He blows where he wants to. You can't tell him how to do it. But I'm telling you, you've got just as much blessing that night on your knees. Listen, David Ingalls saying there's a whole lot of people going home as we did last night running and jumping the pews. Amen. Not more blessed, just, just as blessed, though. See, we can't tell the Holy Ghost how to work. We have to be available to him to be moved by him. As he blows, the wind is blowing again. I said, the wind is blowing. I wish I could go find that song, Brother Buddy, saying, the wind is blowing, the wind is blowing. I love Buddy here. My wife and I just talking about Brother Buddy the other night. He, he ministered to our lives so much. Has such a special impartation that's on a personal level. Hallelujah. Man, love had a good, such, a, such a sweet spirit. Love ministers. Would impart everything he had. Hallelujah. One of, his, one of his major gifts was um, ministering through song and, and Holy Ghost songs. Praise God. I said, praise God. He could, he could just get everyone to start singing and praise. You know, and, and then see, Doyle Tucker got in his church and Brother Doyle got around him and that thing got off on Brother Doyle and Brother Doyle started doing for 
doing uh, things like that for Buddy's sermons. He, his Buddy would preach and Dole would sing it. Put into a, put into a song. Hallelujah. He preached a sermon on, you know, um, you know, not being controlled by your feelings. Dole would come back and sing a song, Mr. Feelings. You know, talking about we've been liberated. He came and sang Emancipated. That song Emancipated. I done sit here much too long. Sit here singing freedom song. And then he goes on talking, and he says, I'm going to act up. Remember, remember that a lot of the slaves wouldn't leave the plantations because they didn't know anything else. They were free, but they wouldn't leave. All of a sudden, he said, I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to act on the freedom. There's a lot of Christians who get free and don't act on their freedom. See, he took that whole message, Brother Buddy preached, put it into a song. Sang, I mean, I still got, you know, Brother Bill has, I had the album from Brother Doyle's thing. Brother Doyle went home a couple of years ago. Been a year? Just last year? This past year, 2014, Brother Doyle went home to be with the Lord. Him and Buddy run around heaven singing songs. <laughs> and his wife five months later. Yeah. So they're all up there singing. When we understand that the Spirit blows as he wills, then we don't come to church trying to tell him how to do it. We come to church asking him what he want to do. In other words, we may, we may start out. Once we get started, you know, I went out on a, um, I'm about to wrap up here. I think we said what we need to say. Uh, I had a Raymond friend, went to Raymond together. He was from North Carolina. He was down from Jacksonville area. Actually, he's in the state house now. He's, he got into politics. He's in North Carolina. He's a North Carolina congressman for the state of North Carolina in the North Carolina Senate Congress. And uh, Keith. And, um, but he had, he had a, a doctor in his church. And uh, he was Dutch, and he was a urologist, and he was in his church. And we had gone and preached for Keith down there in his church uh, a couple of times and got to know um, Dr. Van Doren. And uh, one day he invited me and Keith to go down and go out on his Dutch, his North Sea Dutch sailing vessel that took him 12 years to build because he built it out of re reinforced concrete. Rose, yeah, concrete floats. Displacement. You, you just, we think about them battleships, you know. The Yamato had 12-inch thick steel hull. That won't light, but you displace water, it floats. So it was a boy, and it didn't bounce in the water. Yeah. <laughs> it just sat in the water and went. Well, he had, he had, he had diesel engine to, to navigate through the channels to get out to, to open water. Rosewood, beautiful vessel. Pulled the, and pulled, we pulled the sails up, turned the motors off. See, So we might come to church and use the motors to get us into the channel, and then we'll pull the sails up. Let the Holy Ghost take us where, you know, and we, we, we go with the wind. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, my. We were, at the time we went out, we were, we were kind of chilling out there by Fort Macon coming out of uh, Moorhead City, Atlanta Beach, the, the, uh, the uh, marina there. And we were, we were channeled out down to Fort Macon and about to go out, and dolphins were running with us right beside the boat because they, they liked the vibrations of the motor. So they, were just, they had a school of dolphins. It's the coolest thing I've ever seen. Just, that's cool. <laughs> Watch the set. Okay. Oh, yeah. But that's <laughs> Hallelujah. See, and we can be in services. God's doing stuff. We get caught up. Somebody got healed. We're over there looking at the dolphins. God's wanting to move over here. We need to come to church. We need to re-fire re an expectancy in us that the Holy Ghost. See, you get to talking about the things of God, and he starts stirring things up in us. Amen. Now, I know we've talked a lot about the past couple years about the crazy gracers. I'm done talking about the crazy gracers. They're crazy. You can't fix them. Let them do their thing. Let God deal with them. I mean, you guys, are, your guys are equipped, know what to do. When that stuff, that stuff comes down your pipe, you know exactly how to handle it because you know it's not true. We're going to talk about the Holy Ghost. This is a year of manifestation, of visitation, of a visitation, of manifestation and demonstration. Not that he wouldn't want to work before. We're just putting a focus on it. And I tell you when, you, when you start putting focus on things of God, he'll just start doing stuff to prove it out. What's he going to do? I don't know exactly what he's going to do, but I'm waiting for it, and I'm looking for it. And I'll be ready to run with it when he does. And when the wind hits, I'm going to have, have my sails out so he can catch it, and I can go with him. Amen? I said amen. Oh, glory to God. Somebody else say glory to God. Somebody else say hallelujah. Now, Ha, huh. my, 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 my. There are seasons in which God does different things in our lives and even in our ministries. 
And um, back in 19, when 1989, he announced that he started doing his, his first ones around 1990. Dan Hagen started doing ministers' conferences. And the very first one he held was down in Charlotte at Philip and Cheryl Jackson's church. And we were in those meetings, the very first ones. Praise God. Janie and I were there. She was pregnant with Shannon. And uh, was she, no, couldn't have been Shannon. So she was born in 89, though. So it had been 89 he had the first one. Okay. And uh, she was sitting in those, her, chair, her feet wouldn't touch the floor because of the way those plastic chairs were, and she was pregnant, and her legs were just going to sleep, hanging there. And just, it was just, but she was there being a good trooper here and here and dad minister. And, um, you know, he did those, he did those ministers meetings for about several years. And then, then kind of where he's, he, he came back and said, you know what? The Lord spoke to me in one of those ministers meetings. He said, the spirit of God spoke to me and told me that if I don't bring the move of the spirit back into our meetings, it's going to be lost to a whole generation. And that's when they started having what they called Holy Ghost meetings. So in the early 90s. And, you know, and, and that, that kind of carried right on until Dad went home. And, and, and I remember him saying this because we went, went out to Tulsa. It was one of his first Holy Ghost meetings out at, at, at Tulsa at Winter Bible. And he said, he said now it's going to take me a few meetings to get back into that flow. Actually, we were in the very first one he did. I, I, I may, may have been down at um, Scott Webb's church in, in uh, Birmingham. We went down for that nine-hour drive to Birmingham. Listen, you know, Janie wasn't working. Kids were little. We threw them in the car and took off to a meeting. You know, Alan and Cindy went with us. And went down to that very first uh, Holy Ghost meeting. And Dad got up and said, it's going to take me a while to get back into that flow. Now, I thought the flow was pretty good. But every meeting he did, it got stronger. Amen? So what are we going to do? We're going to get back into the flow. Because we're going to put a focus on that this year. We're talking about the Holy Spirit. Can't you just sense something in the atmosphere just because we've been talking about the Holy Spirit? See, when we entreat him and honor him and respect him and worship him and recognize him as the third person of the Godhead and worthy of all adoration and praise, just like the Father and the Son, he begins to work and to manifest in different ways. And I believe we're just going to have an expectancy. And as we have that expectancy, greater things are going to happen. You know, not that he hasn't wanted to work before, but see, we, if we shut him down, if we don't flow in that way, or, or there's a season for something else, you know, uh, he doesn't work that way. And it's like dad said, it's going to take him two or three meetings to get back in that flow. And I'm telling you now, by the time he got to winter, I believe it was by the time he got to winter Bible that year, he was back in the flow and going with God and things are starting to break forth on the right hand and on the left. Hallelujah. And once he got over into that, it didn't take a whole lot. See, you could just you could kind of go and, and, and do things, and it would stir up the atmosphere, and the Spirit of God would come and manifest, praise God, and, and you, get, you were more in tune. See, we get more in tune with him. Amen? It's like finding a frequency on the old radios, and, and once you find it, you, 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 know, you don't have to look for it anymore. You just fine-tune it. How many remember the old dials that had tuning and fine-tuning? Yeah. Had that second dial. Okay? So you would use the big one and find about... You could hear it coming in, but it might be scratchy or whatever, and you reach over in the fine tune, and, and, and it, did, it did it in smaller increments. And you hit it, boop, there it is, right on, spot on. Amen? Well, we might be doing the big knob right now, but we're going to get to the fine tuning soon. Hallelujah. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the giving online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.